I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Glory to God. I say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. So let me tell you what, um, what, what, what I plan to do. I'm going to share so for, for some few minutes. And we're going to end the service by praying for you and having a great time of worship and closing the service that way. Will you turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 9 in verse 23? Mark chapter 9 in verse 23. Glory to God. Mark chapter 9 in verse 23. I hope your faith is stirred up like my faith is stirred up. This is my wine press. I don't know about you. This is my wine press. Mark chapter 9 in verse 23. Mark chapter 9 in verse 23. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says this. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And this evening, I mean, you, you can target anything. I want to talk about the supernatural principles of change. And that's why as the sea began to sing the song, I was like, oh wow, this is so, this is so wonderful. It says, if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. So the question is this. Why does change seem so difficult? Everybody has something they want to change. It could be someone the doctor has said to you, I'm sorry you can get pregnant. And you're looking for a baby. It could be a single man or a single woman that really wants to transition from being single to being married. It could be someone that needs to just scale in their business. And what they're saying is that, okay, and this is why I'm teaching this. So, they're saying, I've been praying. I've been fasting. What is wrong? What am I going to do to get God's attention? First of all, you have God's attention. Yeah. Oh, yes. Because you are the apple of his eyes. You have God's attention. So why are people, so why does change seem so difficult? And this is the first thing. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to dwell on that because of time. I, I really want to talk about how God changes people and how to position yourself for the change. So why, why does change seem so difficult? The, the major, one of the most significant things is got the wrong mindset. Jesus Christ got to the man at the pool of Bethesda and he asked him, do you want to be made whole? And the man looked at him and he said, I have no man. Is that the question to the, to the is that the answer to the question do you want to make the whole? The reason why is that the longer you stay in the problem, the problem can become a mentality. So you are believing God for marriage, and someone says, Do you want to get married? Say, so where are the men? The question is that do you want to get married? Someone says to you, Why not expand your business to Abuja? You say, you say, you say, ah, expand my business to Abuja. Do you want to kill me? He didn't say I want to kill you. But the thing with change is that. When people stay for a long time in a situation, they build philosophies, they build theologies, they build analysis around their current condition. And that makes it so difficult for there to be a change. But the question now is this. Are all things possible to them that believe? Yes. Oh, yes. So the doctor says you have a cancer. Can you be quiet? Yes. Yes. And what I'm, you know, what I'm teaching you is what I've tested. The other day, the other day I was talking to one of my friends and we were sharing a testimony uh, about someone that needed to get pregnant. And this person had prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and there was no that kind of miracle. And I said, okay, you know what? Since I know you very well, let's do this together. And we had a Bible faith program together. And you know, I began to, I said, this is what you have to do every day. This is what you have to do every day because I understood the principles of change. I said, this is what you have to do every day. And just not too long. The first month, nothing changed. I remember she, the first month, she was so built up in her faith. She said, oh, glory to God. I'm going to get pregnant now. And she saw her period. And when she saw her period, she just went down. Then I called her and said, why are you feeling now? That's not the way this thing works, though. The Bible says the sower will sow the seed. He will go and sleep night and day. What does that mean? Sometimes this thing takes time. Amen? Hallelujah. The Bible says follow them go through faith and patience have what inherited the promise. I said, I, I, no, no, no. This is not how you behave. And faith doesn't give up anyway. So, so she got up again. The second month she confessed. And this second month, this second month, a period delayed a little. And when it delayed a little, 
Then she saw the period. Oh, I said, my God. Oh, this is over. And I said, I love the fact that I delayed a little. The world is working. I said, let's go. So, let's go again. Then, let's go again. I noticed she became stable. I didn't need to follow up with her. She began to do by herself. All of a sudden, I heard. I said, oh, now she's actually some months pregnant. Glory to God. So the question, this is a question. This is a question. And I've done this over and over again. There's a lady in the UK. She had a certain challenge. And I told her, let's sit down together and do this. Sometimes it's still difficult to do because it's a large number of people. But there's, there are Bible principles of change. I understand you've been praying. I understand you've been fasting. But there are things that amplifies your prayers. There are things that makes them deliver results. When you understand this principle, listen to me. No matter what you're going through, you will know how to fix it. Because you understand the not and buts of change. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So the first question is, how does God change people? How does God change people? How does God move barren people to pregnant people? How does God change people from hustling to thriving? How does God change people? How does God change people? Let's look at the word. Let's look at the word. <laughs> First Kings chapter 17. And we're going to read quite a number of scriptures just to, just to let you know. First Kings chapter 17 in verse 11. How does God change people? And this particular one, it was a change of a financial state. It had something to do with economy and provision. The Bible says this. This was the woman at the widow at Zarephath. Elijah told that girl, bring me a meal. The Bible says, as she was going to fetch, he called unto her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, as the Lord liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a measure, a little oil in cruise. And behold, I'm gathering these two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son. Why? That we may eat it and what? And die. So the woman said, that I know that the provision will run out. He says that I'm just preparing to eat the last meal and die. And what did Elijah do to bring about change? See what the Bible says, verse 13. And Elijah said, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake. And bring it unto me and make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, the barren of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. How did the Lord bring change to this woman? She was going on a financial recession. Her business was crumbling. Everything was crumbling financially. All she saw was doom. The way God brought change was to send a prophet into word and say, as the Lord leave it. As the Lord leave it. Why? The word of God is the primary instrument for bringing change to his people. The word of God is a primary instrument of bringing change to his people. How do I know that? Genesis, Genesis chapter 18. I mean, you see the stories everywhere. Now let's look at Genesis chapter 18. How does God... So, this woman that had this economic problem, this woman that had this funding problem, how did God bring change? God brought change by sending the word through his prophet Elisha. I'm saying so to you because how is change going to come to you? God will send his word. Look at another story. This is the story of a barren woman. Someone says, I'm here because, I, you know, I, I need a child. Okay. Genesis chapter, chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, verse 10. Genesis chapter 18, verse 10. The Bible says, and this was a prophetic word. He said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And when Sarah held it in the tent, she was behind him. The Bible says, when Sarah had it, she was behind him. Verse 11. And Abraham and Sarah were old, and they were stricken in ages. And it had ceased to be with Sarah, according to the man of women. She was, listen to me. Mira, Sarah did not just, was not just in menopause. When the Bible says their body was dead, it meant that they had no sexual feeling. Menopause, you can still have sexual feeling, but you can't, you know, go further. It said, was dead. 
But how did God preserve it? God says, He sent them a word. He says, I will return to you. Revelation is what provokes revolution. 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 You want to you want to experience a total revolution. The raw material for revolution is revelation. I know you are praying aggressively, but with your prayer, add revelation and see revolution. This is a hearing conference. Sir. So I'll say we are praying because the real power of prayer is not what we say, what it says back to us. So in this conference, you'll be hearing things. That's so weak. In this conference, you'll be hearing things. Oh, I can't hear your believing amen. In this conference, you'll be hearing things. In this conference, you'll be seeing things. Say, I receive it. Psalm 107 verse 20. How does God change circumstances? Psalm 107 verse 20. Put it on the screen. And I'm going to show you how this is done. Psalm 107 verse 20. Can you put it on the screen quickly, please? See what the Bible says. He sent his word. And his word healed them. And delivered them from what? Their destruction. How does God heal finances? By sending word. How does God heal trouble marriages? By sending word. How does God heal sick bodies? By sending word. How does God open fallopian tube? By sending word. How does God break addiction? By sending word. He sent it. Many people say, why do you go to church? You go Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> Can't you just go once? The reason why is that when you come to a meeting like this, words are sent every day. And that's why in every service, they are teaching meetings and they are catching moments. Because some things cannot be thought. They are only caught, sir. And you just catch it. You will hear people say, it was when I came, the pastor said this. But everybody heard it. Why did it work? Because everybody was taught but one person caught. Mary in Luke chapter 1 asked the angel. He said, I'm a virgin. How would I get pregnant? <laughs> the angel said, you are asking me how would I get pregnant? You are pregnant already. He said, how am I pregnant? He said, the word I said to you has made you pregnant. Why? Because every word that God says contains the life of God. <laughs> this is the way the Bible says in Luke chapter 1 verse 35 in the Amplified Version. He said, no word from God is void of power to accomplish what he says. Every word of God contains resources within the world to produce what he says. That's why, that's why when they say it's a dynamite, what makes it explode is inside the explosion, sir. All you have to do is to detonate it and it explodes. All we have to see is to, is to release the world. Everything it takes to get pregnant, everything it takes for a change of level, everything for a testimony is right in the world. All you have to do is what? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Isaiah 55 verse 11. Oh, wow. Isaiah 55 verse 11. Oh, glory to God. Isaiah 55 verse 11. It says this. It said, So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me. What? You are not hearing a sermon. You are receiving spiritual empowerment, sir. He says, so shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me for That means the word was sent on assignment. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. He says, so shall my word be 
that was sent. What was he sent to do? That same thing he said. He said, the word shall not return back to me void. Void means that not doing what he says, not accomplishing it, just going and coming back the same way. He said, it shall not, not it will not. It shall not for the emphasis. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Revelation is what provokes insight. What provokes revolution. Huh. Scriptural discovery is what enhances destiny. It's discoveries that enhances destiny. It's discoveries that enhances destiny. It is discovery that enhances destiny. The reason I'm saying so is that most Christians do not understand the value of sitting down under the word. They think there's something more important. But Jesus himself told Mary a matter. He said, one thing is needful. Hey, he said, one thing is needful. Let me tell you something. When people have problems, they can do every other thing but sit down with the word. Ah, this, this, this child problem, one thing is needful. This stagnation, one thing is needful. He said, and Mary has chosen it and no man can take it from her. There is value in sitting down. Just sit down on the word. The Bible says it sent his word and his word lighted Israel. He said it's what lighted Israel. The whole of Israel was changed by one word. It's something you must learn. The value of, and it's not, I mean, you will hear Apostle Rome preach us in a soft way. It's not my exciting preaching. It's the value of sitting down, understanding that that sitting down is the prerequisite for change. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8. Biblical insight is what makes men of sight. Glory to God. See what the Bible says. And the Lord sent a word into Jacob. And it lighted into Israel. It said the word. Just notice how it says the word was sent. The word was sent. And when it says the word was sent. People that don't understand theology say it was a prophetic word. No, sir. All of God's word is sent. And that word begins to provide light. What does that mean? Let me give you what that means. As we're teaching this way, when the Bible says the Lord sent this word and provided and lighted, this is what it means. As we're teaching this way, there will be something in the teaching that will tell you what to do about your business. We, we didn't say it directly, oh. But as we're teaching, bam, 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 bam. Because that's the word, it's light. So all of a sudden, because in the ministry of the word, there are two persons in ministry. There's a person ministering on the pulpit, but there's a ministry of the spirit going on with you, pointing out to different things. It sent his word and it lighted upon Israel. The other day I was listening to, um, a long time ago, I was listening to um, Pastor Debo sharing a story. And he said, when you're doing your mathematics PhD thesis, you are given a mathematical project that there has never been a solution to. It's a mathematical problem, but there's no solution to. And you're giving it to solve. So there are always two answers. Either you say the problem is unsolvable and you prove through mathematical theories it's unsolvable, or you solve the problem and you prove that that answer is what? Solvable. So he was saying that he, was, he had done the problem for months and he ended up with one problem. He got about maybe 36 quadratic equations to get one answer. He said, how would I solve these things with 36 quadratic equations and get one answer? He said, one day he was reading his Bible and he just read that the Bible says, and the Lord parted the sea and he went hither and thither. And he just said, you have 36 quadratic equations. Put them in a thing. Thither and thither. It says, I put them, they cancel themselves out. It said, it reduced. Is there a quadratic equation in the Bible? But when the word is sent, it lights up. I'm telling you, you, you will just know what to do to get married. And you just be like, wow. You just, it's when I left the conference, the knowledge will come to you. It's, it's an awareness. It just comes to you. The light of the spirit shines. 
You just know. I just said, oh, wow, what we need to do now is marketing. They said, how do you know that? Um, I don't, because during the teaching, just occurred to me that what we need to do now is marketing. That is the lighting power of the word. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. What does God, what's do, what does God, what does the word of God do? The first thing, the word of God bets hope and faith. We can all come to the church, but how many people believe that all things are possible? But from this prayer and this teaching, a lady was 54 years old. She wrote a testimony. I'm 54. I'm first time engaged. Why did she even think that was possible? That's what the word of God does. It bets hope. How does the Bible say in Romans? He says that all things were written for them that through the scriptures we might have hope. The only reason why I can encourage a cancer patient she can be healed because I've seen it in the world that it's possible. The only reason why I can say despite the recession you can do well because I saw Isaac. The Bible says there was famine everywhere but Isaac sowed in the same land and reaped what? In the same recession. Why do I know you can have a child? Because in the Bible, every bad woman that looked up to God eventually carried a child. That's how I know. That is how I know you can have a child. Your case cannot be more difficult than Elizabeth. Your case cannot be as tough as Sarah. Your case cannot be as bad as Mary. Scripture produces hope. He said faith coming by hearing. The woman had an issue of love for 38 years. How did she know she could be healed? Bible says, and when she had heard, there is something about hearing that ignites hope. If you are hopeless, you are not hearing the right thing, sir. I say, if you are hopeless, you are not hearing the right thing. There is something about true gospel that ignites hope and faith. How does... I'm telling you, hope and faith. You can't be full of the word and be depressed. You can't be depressed and be full of the word. One gives way to the other. They are inversely proportional. Once you are full of the word, there's no depression. Then once you are depressed, you are full of... Many of you that enter into mood swing, have you noticed it's attached to where you are low on the word? Glory to God. The word of God bets hope and faith. And that's why Jesus Christ always asks the disciples, where is your faith? Listen, how does Jesus have the courage to ask them, where is your faith? If he had not done something to them to give them faith. But the reason he asked, where is your faith? Was because from all the teachings, you should be full of faith. So, he was shocked that despite sitting in the world, the faith is not present. And I was telling the pastors during the pastors' conference from we had pastors from Monday to Wednesday. I said, there are three ways you know if faith is present. What is said, what is believed, and what is done. Three ways to know if faith is present. What is said, what is believed, and what is done. Yeah, action. That's why I say it, that's what is done. Action. Hey, I believe for 100 million. Are you taking steps of 100 million? I believe to have a child. Are you taking steps of having a child? When you want to have a child, you stop pregnancy kids. Because if you want, is that, uh, are you pregnant? I believe that's why I have pregnancy kids. The second thing the word of God does is this. The word of God illuminates. Psalm 119 says the word is lamp and light unto my feet and part. <laughs> Why? How does God change people? Illumination. How does illumination come? Listen. The reason why illumination is powerful is this. Every true change starts with a change of perspective. Paul went to meet the Lord. He said there was a thorn in the flesh. He had prayed and he had prayed. He had prayed. The thorn did not go. 
The Bible says, and God said to him, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect. See, when that revelation came, then there was a different perspective. That's why when Abraham came to him, your name will no longer be Abraham, it will be Abraham. Because Abraham means assume father. Abraham means what, what the father of many nations. Because revelation changes perspective. God knows until your perspective is changed, you will be held in bondage. So God uses revelation to illuminate our hearts. Why is the word of God powerful? Because God's word is transformational. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. It says, be not conformed to this world, but what? Be transformed. How do you change effortlessly? The way you change effortlessly is through the ministry of the word of God. Because the word is transformational. The word changes hatred into love. The word changes people that have low self-esteem to people that have healthy self-esteem. The word changes people that are fearful into strong people of faith. How? Because be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewal of the heart. The word says fake it until you get it. That's not us. We don't need to fake it. We can get it. The word emphasizes look it and you will have it. We don't have to look it. From the inside, there can be metamorphosis. Sir. We can change. How do we change? As we behold in the mirror, the glory of God, we are changed. Oh, we are changed from glory to glory into that same image in the mirror. Somebody say amen. Why? How do you change? The world transforms us. Bible says when they saw Peter and his faith, they took knowledge that had been with Jesus. They took knowledge. They've been radically transformed by the word of God. When the word comes into your system, it will knock out the low self-esteem. When the word comes into your system, it will knock out the fear. When the word comes into your system, it will knock out the loneliness. People wonder, but you don't behave like what? I've been altered by the word. The word has altering power, sir. The word has what? Altering power. Altering power. They say you don't behave like your siblings. You can't behave like them because you have been altered by the word. James said it so clearly. He said, oh glory to God. I said glory to God. Praise God. Let me tell you the truth. Many people are trying too hard to change. Let the word change you. Because every time you're trying too hard to change, you are putting doing before being. You are putting doing before being. You are putting doing before being. Uh uh. Let the word make you first. Nicodemus came to Jesus Christ. He said, Sir, how are you doing these things? He was expressing a formula. Jesus let what he was doing to who he was. He said, Except the man be born again. He was saying to him, I do what I do because who I am. If you can become that person, you will do the same thing also. How do you change things? Not by changing physical things. You change the being. How do you change the being? It's not something you do by yourself. You do by the word. Glory to God. And the last thing about the word of God is this. And I will tell you how to apply it. Is that the word of God is creative. The word of God is creative and life-giving. He said, the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God, Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick and powerful. For the word of God, the word quick is old English, is alive. Every word that God speaks has life inside you know, in our church, if you attend our church, you will know this. I always say this all the time. I said, when God was going to take out the rib out of Abraham, how did he remove it? He made him to sleep. And he caught him, right? He caught him. How would God's hand touch Abraham when the whole world is in his hands? So how did God remove the rib? The Bible tells us already. He says, he does everything by his word. And nothing without his word. 
Once Abraham slept, how did God remove the rib? He just said, rib, come out. He only said, rib, out. Because the word made the rib, the rib must respond to the word. That's the same way we take out tumors. That's the same way we take out fibroid. Because the master did it. The master did it. He said, rib, out. So, when we said the fiber come out, it has to come out. It has to come out. When we say cancer, come out, it has to come out. When we say leukemia, come out, it has to come out. When we say money, enter, it has to enter. When we say letter, come, it has to come. When we say approval, release, it has to. Because everything was made by the word. He said the things we see are subject to change. But the things we don't see are eternal. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus walked to the tomb of Lazarus. And when he walked there, he, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And people don't understand why he said, Lazarus, come forth. The reason why is that the tomb is like graveyard. Like a lot of people are buried in the tomb. It's not one person. So if he had mistakenly said, come forth. And Abraham was there. And Moses was there. Either he referred to them or not. Because the word of God is full of power. You will just see them from the dead. Even Enoch. Beam. <laughs> Even Abraham. Beam. <laughs> what is happening? They are coming alive because of the spoken word. Glory to God. Hey, if the word is so powerful, why are you not speaking it? And this is what Roman says. He said, faith does not say, how will this happen? Who will do this? He said, the word is near thee, even in their heart and in your mouth. He said the word of faith. What does that mean? Every time they have question happen, say what you believe. Every time you, so let me tell you something. Every time you have the how question, how will you get married at 45? The Lord will perfect all that concerns me. Anytime the question comes up and say, you have leukemia, it is the Lord that he lets me. Anytime the question comes up and says that uh, you will get destroyed, he that watches over Israel neither sleeps nor slumber. Hallelujah. Every time they plot against you as a politician in your office, the Bible says no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you shall be condemned in judgment. If you believe, say amen. Someone says that I will get the contract. The Bible says God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He will put make rivers in the desert. He says I will go before you. Hallelujah! Right before the appointment, right before the interview, right before the presentation, right before the papers. He said I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. He has gone before me already. How is your 2022? He has gone ahead of me already. How is January? He has gone ahead of me already. How is March? He has gone ahead of me already. He has gone ahead of me already. Somebody say hallelujah. Hey, that's what the dot what does. It's life giving and creative. So every time I'm speaking the word. I'm giving life. Every time I'm speaking the word, I'm creating. Every time I'm speaking the word, I'm giving life. Glory to God. Glory to God. You're praying, but how much of the word is in your prayer? You're fasting, but how much of the word is in your fasting? So the question today is this. How do I get the word to work for me, in me, and through me? How do I become a word professional? There are mechanics that are experts. There are doctors that are professional. How do I become a word expert? That I can sit down with the word and cut out the fiber. I can sit down with the word and cut out the leukemia. I can sit down with the word and receive the approval. That's what we're going to. Glory to God. As you grow in the things of God, you will learn not to depend on other people's faith. Yeah. People that depend on other people's faith are still evolving in their faith. 
The Bible says, this is what the Bible says. It says, if any be sick amongst you, let him call for the elders. Meaning the elders should not be sick. Are you hearing me? He said, let it. The assumption there is that the elders will not be sick. You're an elder now. People should be coming to you for prayer. You should not be the one looking for prayer. And if you're not there, it's growing time now. You are going deeper. Somebody say amen. amen. Wave your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost, everybody. Wave your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. All of you at home, all of you watching online, pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to declare that the revelation of God's word floods my mind. I hear what I need to hear. I see what I need to see. The eyes of my understanding are opened. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please have your seats. Mark chapter 4, just before we pray. So the question now is this, and this is where it gets practical. How exactly do I do this? <laughs> see, see, how exactly? So I've learned something. One, the word of God is the primary tool of changing levels. So if I want to change from this 10 million to 100 million, what would change that? See, because when God, God changes me to change my situation, because the law of change is this, first within, then without. Did you hear that? The first law of change. Every change starts from inside. God does not do bad job. When people change from the outside, it's temporary. That's why people that win lotto or win lottery money, when you give them one or two years, they're back to it. So, God doesn't want to go back to it. So, when he changes you, it changes from inside. And that's why sometimes it's, it's a process. It's like a pregnant woman. She's pregnant for three months. Nobody can see it, but she knows she's changing. But eventually, she will see it. The one that puts clothes in her stomach says she's pregnant, she will never deliver. So the people that pose that says, we look like it's never deliver. There's no need to fake it when you can have it. There's no need to fake it when... See, the scripture don't make a mistake. It says, all things are possible to him that believe it. All things, all things are possible. He didn't say something. He said, all things are possible to him that believe it. Praise God. I said, praise God. Apostle Arume was telling me some time ago, he said that, you're going to see what I'll do in Makodi. And I saw. I saw. I saw the biggest, most modern auditorium in the northeast Nigeria. Right in Makodi. In the midst of Boko Haram. Why? All things are possible to him that believe it. Faith does not make it easy. It only makes it achievable. Faith doesn't make it easy. It only makes it what? Achievable. Despite all odds. That's why no matter what you brought here tonight, that same creative word, once it's released online, outside, in the center, it will begin to work and establish, dismantle what the will of God is in your life. Glory to God. Mark chapter 4. Because I want us to just close with this. Verse 26. So the question is this. Okay, pastor, thank you for letting me know that the word of God is how God will change me. So as a single person, if I want to change from single to married, how will I change? By the word. If I want to change from barren to having children, how will I change? By the word. If I want to change from no approver to approver, how do I change? By the word. If I want to change from 10 million to 100 million, how do I change? By the word. If I want to change from addict to non-addict, how do I change? By the word. How do I know that? Romans 12 verse 2. He said we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. And what is renewing us? The word of God. How do I change? Look at this. Back to the 4 verse 26. And Jesus said, so is the kingdom of God. And when he says so is the kingdom of God, it means this is how spiritual operations work. There are spiritual protocols. For example, 
If you want to marry someone in the Yoruba land, no matter where you are, you must come and prostrate as a man for the family of the children of the bride. Yes or no? Yeah, because it's it's not about right or wrong. That's how the Yoruba culture works. In the north, men squat. When they want to greet, they squat. Someone said, it's, it's not about right or wrong. Because no culture is superior to another culture. The only superior culture is the culture of God's word. So in some cultures, people squat, people prostrate. God says, Jesus said, in our own kingdom, this is the cultural thing we do. These are the protocol of legislation in our kingdom. What is it? See what it says. So is the, is the kingdom of God. What happened? As if a man should sow seed into the ground. He said, the first thing that happens is this. He said, whatever you want to do, the seed must be sown into the ground. The same Mark chapter 4 tells us what the seed is. Tell what the ground is. What is the seed? The seed is the word of God. What is the ground? The heart of man. Mark chapter 4, that same chapter. You can see there. If you want me to show you, I can show you. But the seed is the word of God. What The ground is the heart of man. So what God says is this. In this kingdom, whatever you want to do must first be put in your heart. He said, this is the way the kingdom work. And let me tell you something. If you're a very spiritual person, when God starts dealing with you about anything that manifested, he first puts in your heart. That's why the Bible says, eyes have not seen, neither have not heard, neither has he entered into the heart. The first place he puts it, he puts it in. Once he puts it in your heart, is the evidence of what he wants to do in your life. Glory to God. That's why you just sit down like this and you just say, ah, maybe I should buy a house in London. And you know that that thought was not the flesh. How? Because it puts it in your... I mean, I explained this. You know, I explained this some time ago. I don't know if I can get um, four of the brothers in the choir to come. Come quickly. Four of the brothers in... Shagun, all of you just come. Gerard, all of you just come quickly. You know, four of the brothers to come. And I said, this is how things come into your heart. This is how things come into your heart. Quickly. This is you. This is you over here. Then the two, two people come. This is, this is your mind. And this is your senses. This is your this is this is your senses, eye, nose, your 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 gates. This is your mind that interprets it. This is your this is your spirit. The way information will come naturally is that your senses you will see or hear something. It will pass it to your mind. Your mind will what pass it to your spirit. That's natural knowledge. But what happens in revelation knowledge is this: God bypasses. God bypasses both the senses, bypasses both the mind, reaches to your spirit first. So when it reaches to your spirit, go, go to the other side, please. When it reaches to your spirit, this is what happens. Your spirit knows what your mind cannot explain. Oh my God. Do, do you know what I'm talking about? And, and that's why sometimes it's difficult to explain spiritual things because that's what the Bible said. The things of the spirit are spiritually designed. He said to the carnal mind, the carnal mind that live in the senses, he said they are foolishness. Why are they foolishness? They are, the frequency in which they operate is different. The carnal mind is in analog. This is digital. So, when you put in the, when you put in the program, it says error. It says error because it's advanced. Have you tried to do one billion times one billion calculator before? It will just say one point error. Because the dimension is higher. So, in the dimension, the spirit, the spirit brings information and when the mind receives it, that mind will not begin to send it back. That's revelation. That's revelation. Revelation is when your spirit begins to reveal to your mind. Most people think revelation is the spirit of God within your spirit. Not necessarily. Because your spirit and the spirit of God are one. So, real revelation, real revelation is your spirit having taken hold of what is of the spirit begins to reveal to your mind. Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. So see what the Bible says. How do you make the change happen? It said what you do is that if you want the change to happen, a man will begin to cast seed into the ground. What is seed? The word of God. This is how, let everybody pay attention because this is where we get practical. So if I'm believing God for a child, I find the scriptures that pertain to a child. Every morning and evening, I begin to say it. Why am I saying it? I'm casting seed into the ground. I'm casting seed 
into the ground. And when I'm finished casting seed, just that man, then the Bible says, Paul planted, Apollo will water. How do I water? By speaking again. He says, see what the Bible says. So, how do I cast it? I'm saying so because this is the way you're going to have a miracle now. Over time, I've trained myself to say certain things to myself over and over and over again. And I'm sowing that those seeds and all those seeds I'm sowing, they don't go into an empty space. They become a harvest ultimately. So, what happens is this. You are believing for an expansion. Let's say that in the recession, it affected your business and you want to come out of it. You will get that scripture of Isaiah. I'm um, sorry, of um, Isaac. And you begin to say, the Bible says that in the same year, Isaac sowed and reaped a hundredfold. And you begin to declare that in the name of the Lord Jesus, that the same way Isaac sowed and received a hundredfold, I sow in this year. All my investment and effort may come back in a hundredfold. I am recession proof free. You begin to declare it over yourself. That's how you begin to sow. You begin, you, you, you're thinking about marriage and you want to get married, you want an approval. You know, I, I remember when we we're trying to get this particular property we're in, I just told the pastor, Psalm 44, it's a, if you're a leader in our church, you know it, it's a, it's the best we use all the time, Psalm 44. The Bible says, and they got not the land by their arm or sword, but because that had favor unto them. So we're not going to get the land because we have money, because we have connection. It's the light of God's favor that will shine on us. And you begin to say it. You have a project. You begin to say it. You begin to say it. You are sowing the seed into your heart. Most people don't like this because it puts responsibility of change on you. You are raising up children, you will tell yourself. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that I should go. When it's old, it will not depart from it. You will say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, mention your children's name. They will not depart from it. Because there's a law of the Spirit in operation. You are applying for a job, you will tell yourself, it's the one that opens the door no man can shut. It's the one that shuts the door no man can open. The Lord has opened the door for me, it can never be shut again. So the first thing is this, watch this now. You begin, a man shall cast seed into the ground. Then the next thing is that you should sleep. What is sleep? Sleep is just, see, every time you see sleep and rest, it's about believing in the finished work. Just rest in it. That though I don't see it. Have you noticed people that plant seeds? When they plant seeds, if they go and dig them up again, they destroy the seed, yes or no? The best farmers just plant seed and just do other things. They don't go into the air to check it. When you say something, don't kill it with unbelief and negative. Just rest. That, that's where the problem is. People can't rest. People can't rest. They can't rest. The, the anxiety. And that's what the other verse says that the worries of this life choke the word of God. Rest. And when you rest, what's the next thing? The Bible says, and rise night and day. It's going to take some time. But someone says, how long will it take? All the time you've been trying as he walked. Because faith always work with patience. Faith always work with patience. So, people did for one month. But the person that is teaching you the word of God, was it after one month he saw results? Oh, I've been giving now three months. I've seen nothing. Was it after three months he saw results? The nature, let me tell you, Depend, someone says, but this person will join together. You don't know where he came from, what he has been doing before you joined. Bring those buckets for me. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. And where's the camera guy? You, you need to come. So I book and see. Where's the pair of jeans? Can I get it? Thank you. Just put the buckets on the floor. Yeah, you need to pour some of this in here. Some of this one. That's fine. Pour, pour some more. Yeah. Thank you. You can leave it. Thank you, the three of you. Yeah, put, 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 some, put some detergent. Yeah, that's fine. Let me, let me pour some here. The truth is that I have water and soap here. But if I want to wash these jeans and I put it here, look at this. The amount of water or soap cannot fully what? Cannot fully dissolve these genes. It may dissolve a white shirt, 
but it cannot dissolve these genes. The problem is that when you want to dissolve genes and you're comparing it to white shirts, are you getting it? You want to dissolve genes. These are things that are stayed in your family for 20 years. And you want to dissolve it and you're hoping that this sugar, sugar, water and soap will dissolve it. It's not as if the water and soap is not powerful, but it needs more time. It needs more concentration. So what do I do? I keep walking. As I'm walking, I keep pouring the water of the word. I keep pouring until it comes to a time the whole cheese is soaked inside. Ladies and gentlemen, soak it. What did I say? Soak it. The, what the doctor said, soak it. Your health, soak it. Your finance, soak it. Your job, soak it. Your finance, soak it. Your business, soak it. Your womb, soak it. This marriage issue, soak it. Stop going up and down, wasting your time. All you have to do is to get your pocket and the water of the word of God. And you do what? You soak it. Somebody shall soak it. All of you online, type in the comment section. I will soak it. What is this meeting? It's a soaking period. Do you know, even as I pour the water right now, you see, you see, have to wait. Why three days meeting? Because the things you are dealing with, we are soaking it. We are soaking, soaking, soaking. Why? It's easy to process when it is soaked. The detergent will have entered every cranium and corner. It will have entered every cranium. So, day and night, I'm walking, soaking it. Day and night, I'm walking, soaking it. I'm walking, soaking it. People think I'm crazy, but I'm doing something. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. The doctor said, you have cancer? You shut up. I'm not called man. You know, when people have cancer, they begin to research more about cancer. You don't watch what you don't want. You don't watch. You don't watch what you don't want. They already said you have cancer. You now said, how often does cancer kill? See what you're watching. Instead of researching cancer, begin to research how many people have gotten healed of cancer. Anywhere focus is energy flows. Anywhere focus is result flows. So, if you focus on negative, you'll see negative results. In this meeting, what do you do? We're soaking. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. Someone says, I, I don't know how long because I don't know what you're washing. I don't know if it's a pant or a boxer. That one is easy wash. But some of you, it's not when Jesus is washing. It's not cat. Duvet. 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 Is duvet the challenge is duvet nature? So it's not about sh -sh 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 -sh. no because of the nature of it, we have to soak it. That's why Jesus said, This kind, this kind, this kind go away not, but by fasting and prayer. Glory to God. What I know is this if you can be patient in soaking, the washing will become easy. The challenge is that when you have not soaked, you don't want to wash. You will not be sweating. And the washing is the prayer. You will not be sweating. Agia. Koya. Aga. Ah. Come down. Ah. It's like, it's like when you see chicken that's been well marinated. The work has been done before they start cooking. They soaked it in sauce for three nights. So the cook is not about being good. It's already soaked in sauce. Just small air frying, just small barbecuing, the, the, the thing comes out really sweet. You say this person is good. He's good because he knows how to soak. <laughs> how do you become good in prayer? By knowing how to soak. How do you become good in declaration? By knowing how to soak. 
how do we soak as we behold in the image the glory of God as we behold in the image the glory of God we are being changed from glory to glory from glory to glory from glory to glory say amen somebody how do you soak you wake up every morning and this is a practical thing you wake up every morning and when you wake up you declare the word I declare I'm blessed my business is blessed we have now made our first one billion naira by the power of the Holy Ghost when you say it when you say it hold on when you start saying your heart business see, see what you have to do <laughs> because your heart is not soaked yet you know it doesn't believe what you're saying but as you begin to say it, the heart has no choice it must be marinated it must be soaked after some time of saying that say, yeah that's true that's true that's true you begin to declare the father thank you because finally i'm engaged and the first time we say the other thing engage <laughs> idiot engage where's your boyfriend you know, you know where's your girlfriend engage but don't worry let's keep sucking it after some time your heart say you say i'm engaged i say yes you are hallelujah and once your heart says yes you are the bible says the heart of a man devices this way it has happened and out of the abundance of of, of the heart what Glory to God. I said glory to God. You have lost some money, you will declare. Joy chapter 2. The years that the locust and the cancer of pillar are stolen. It will what? Recover. Are you here somebody? Are you here somebody? Let's begin to close. Please, can, let's just finish that scripture. Oh, are you here? The Bible says this. The person sleeps and rests night and day. That the seed shall spring and grow, and he knoweth not what how. Look at the next line, verse twenty-eight, and verse twenty-eight begins to deal with the principle of manifestation. Ah, what is it? It says, first of all, then the earth. I, I wish I had the opportunity to talk about this earth matter, because listen to me, the seed of what is incorruptible, the only thing that limits the seed is the heart. That's why. When the heart is planted in unhealthy emotions, in hearts that are not healthy, it limits the seed. The seed itself is incorruptible, but this, the mentality limits the seed. The emotion limits the seed, but we can't go there today. Have you noticed something in, in Mark chapter 4? That's in Mark chapter 4. All the seed that was sown on the first soil, it was the soil that determined the harvest. Out of the first soil, only one type of soil generated harvest. Yes or no? And even the one that generated harvest, it was in three variations. 30, 60, 100. Why? Because of the quality of the heart. The quality of the heart determines the quality of the harvest. We'll talk about that some other time. This is not the time for that because that's a deep teaching. The quality of... Is your heart nutritious? Or is it fallow? You can be praying for something, but your heart is fallow. You are saying, Father, give me a husband. You say, they are not real men. What is in your heart is fallow. You are so seed, but the heart is fallow. You are praying for breakthrough. You say nothing works in Nigeria. The heart, that is the state of the heart. And the heart dominates the seed. You hear what I said? The heart dominates the seed. Let's close with this. Then it says this is how it will happen when the manifestation comes. It says, firstly, the earth will bring forth fruit of herself. That's what the heart does. It says it will bring up first the blade and the air. And the full coordinates. And let me explain what that means quickly. When God begins to answer your prayers, sometimes the whole thing doesn't happen at once. Something will happen that is not your full testimony, but is a proof that God has done something. That is what the air is. The air is not the fruit, but it shows that something is growing. Are you getting me? That's what it shows. I'll give an example. So you're praying for a business for a business funding of 250 million. Your friend comes to you and gives you 2.5 million. There are two things. You say, ah, Father, out of 250, 2.5. What does this nonsense? But if you're wise, you will see it. That God has started with me. That is the air. What do you do with the air? You take the air to God in prayer, in thanksgiving. And say, Father, thank you. As you're thanking him, you're watching the seed again. You're watching the seed again. What happens to most of us is that when the earth shows up, we become ungrateful. And I'll give you, you have been praying for someone to marry you. One guy, 
One year, nobody has showed up. Eventually, one guy showed up, but he's a guy you can't marry just because of your standards. You know, say, uh-uh. Father, what is this now? Even if I want to marry, is this this thing? Oh. What you don't understand, the hair has showed up. What does that mean? God has started. You'll go to God in prayer. Say, Father, thank you. Because I've seen the air. I know I will see the blade. I will see the focus in the air. I'll give you a testimony. My personal sister, she had moved to the US and for one and a half years, she didn't get a job. And, you know, she was crushed and everything. She called on me and said, I said, I said let us pray together. We prayed. And when we prayed, within six weeks, she got, she had applied one and a half years, no interview. Within six weeks, she got about four interviews. Four or six, I can't remember. Then, after she got the interview, two months after, nobody contacted her. Then she called me again. He said, I told you that I need deliverance, that they are following me. Ah, when she said so, I allowed her talk to vent, and I said, I don't think so. He said, what do you mean? I said, this is what I mean. We prayed, and six interviews happened. You don't need deliverance. I said, what you need is to give thanks. And tell God that, Father, you have begun it. Thank you because you will finish it. Because you are not taught the word of God, she thought that thing was an attack. So, how do you keep what God is doing? By what? By comparing it and complaining. So, I led her into Thanksgiving. I said, begin to thank you. Within the next six weeks after that time, she had gotten a job that had paid her hundreds of thousands of dollars. She told me, is this how this works? I said, that's how it works. When the air shows up, you go to God in prayer and thanksgiving. When the blade shows up, you go to God in thanksgiving. Another sister in this church, she had done about four IVFs, married about five or six years, they, five or seven years, they didn't have a child. Eventually, she got pregnant. And when she got pregnant, I want to say something. When she got pregnant, I think the third or fourth month, she lost the baby. She called me and cried her eyes out. He said, what have I done to God? Help me beg God. He did it. And that day I could not talk. I just said, sorry. Sorry. Amen. It's okay. So oh, sorry. Forgive God. The next day I now called her. I asked her. I said, how do you feel? I'm a bit a little better. I asked her one question. I said, you are almost 40. Have you been pregnant before? He said, no. I said, but you have done many IVFs to get pregnant. And this is the only one that worked. I said, go to God in Thanksgiving. And say, Father, thank you that I now know I can get pregnant. Because I, I did not before. But now, at least the child said three months. I said, go to God and give thanks to him. I said, first the blade, then the air, and the full corn. This lady went to God in prayer. Out, because it was a place of pain. So, what I'm saying is that when you're doing this thing, sometimes it's not a place of joy. It's a place of pain. You lost 100 million and they return 1 million back. And you're thanking God. And you're like, what about the 99? So, in a place of pain, she went and gave God praise. Three months after she got pregnant. After that, after that when that three months elapsed, the three months she got pregnant, nine months after, she gave birth to twins. And this time around, she got pregnant and gave birth to twins without the use of IVF. Why? The principle of first the blade, then the air, and the phone. Stop aborting the processor. Let it end in Thanksgiving. Have you heard what I said? Stop aborting the process. Let it end in Thanksgiving. Are you ready to pray? The last verse is this. The next verse. This is the last verse. Because it's a whole parable. Last verse says, And when the fruit is brought forth, immediately it puts in what? A sickle. And that's the revelation. What is a sickle? There will be a connecting idea to bring in your harvest. What did I say? There will be what? A connecting idea to bring your harvest. There will be something that it is, a, an, it is an intelligence that says, for the things I'm expecting, this is how the sickle is used to pull in. There will be that connecting idea that will pull in your harvest. It says, when the fruit is brought forth, because many of you are here, the fruit is brought forth, but you don't understand. That all those ideas that you have are sickle. Meant to use to pull it in. You are still praying and God said use the sickle. God is saying use the sickle. God is saying use the sickle. Yeah. 
As a minister, I knew this. And Pastor Dyer will tell you, I've always been praying, Lord, give us a strategy to reach the city. Give us a strategy. There's a sequel to pull them in. And from nowhere, I'd never seen anybody do morning prayer on Instagram before in my life. In my life, I know that I saw someone do it and I copied. Never. What happened with NLP was that every January in this church for the past 10 years, when we're fasting and praying, we pray on Instagram. So, when COVID happened, we prayed on Instagram. The same way we prayed on Instagram. And when COVID happened, this thing we prayed on Instagram. Let's continue. We continued. I didn't know that that thing was a sequel. As simple as that in, sequel entered. The sequel can be go ahead and be nice to her. And that's it. Glory to God. What we want to do tonight is two things. We want to sow seeds by speaking words. We want to give thanks for the blade and the air. Stand on your feet. Let us pray. Can I give you three minutes to express yourself before Jehovah? Let the music go up. Stand on your feet. Let us pray. Go ahead, everybody. Oh, go ahead, everybody. Oh, go ahead, everybody. 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 Thank you for the blade. Thank you for the air. Thank you for the blade. Thank you for the air. Thank you for the blade. Thank you for the air. Everybody. Thank you for the blade. Thank you for the air. Thank you for the blade. Thank you for the air. Go ahead and begin to declare. Go ahead and begin to sow the seed into the soil. Thank you for the blade and thank you for the air. Oh, Rabba Shatala Pratikose Malamando Parasis. Celebrate the Sombekola Radia Tokas Nashada. Ebra Ketele Kora Masunda Ketele Prende Kodin Shendalatas. Ebra Ketele Pratika Sabalamante Karadosia. Ebra Tele Kora Mashani Kora Maganana. Ebra Ketele Sepre Ketele Kope Katanoska. Ebra Ketele Sombra Tele Kora Manana. Ebra Doka Shambayata Pora Hose. Ebra Toro Toko 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 I meant to pray for some people tonight, but we'll do that. And this is what we're going to do. I will pray on Friday night online and in the Lekki Center. I'm going to hold a special miracle night and declare breakthroughs, all of those things. But this is what I want to do between now because I want to give you time. Between now and Friday, go ahead and thank him for the air and the bleed. The second thing is this. Find out what the Bible says about your area of need begin to sow it into your heart. You know why? So that by the time you come on Friday, you'll be soaked, sir. You will be soaked. As soon as we declare the word, even if there was no womb, the womb will create. Pastor Hanson can tell you, in Abuja, a lady said, what did she, she has killed? Ski, what? Skilosis. Her rib was protruding. What? Come, come, come and take microphone. This happened in Abuja just five days ago. Yes. Pastor, um, this lady has cirrhosis. Yeah. Her rib was protruding. Uh-huh. And then her blade, her shoulder blade came out. Because of that, her, le- her, her left side was shorter than her. Did you hear that? Her shoulder blade in her hand came out. Her left side was shorter. So she was like this. Okay. And then she was just sitting behind. She was behind the hall. Yeah. And There was a stretch. And as the, as her leg the leg that could not touch the floor before touched the floor. She discovered that the shoulder had gone in. The shoulder bone went back into shape. Her rib went the back rib in. 
when you see her, you see the shirt, the rib gone, the rib retracted. Hey. Uh, hey. I said all things are possible to him that believes. Listen to me. When you have not seen power, that's why you that power. When you see power, you know all power belongs to Jesus. He said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. So, we believe that every sort of challenge, Quarry Sapuake Letona, Yesi Letone Keparadia, in the name of Jesus, bows right now. Every health challenge bows right now. Every financial challenge bows right now. Every marital problem bows right now. In the name of Jesus, receive the miracle. Glory to God. Please, Friday, it will be bloody. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, tomorrow, Thursday, um, Apostle Selma will be here to minister. I will be in the Bagada Church to minister on Thursday. So th- Bagada is going to have their own miracle service on Thursday. And Friday will be here for the crowning. And Sundays are our impartation service. Glory to God. And in the name of Jesus, I want to pray for people watching from the hospital. Right now, all of you watching from the hospital, stretch forth your hands. If you can touch the screen, touch it. In the name of Jesus, and everyone that is a cancer patient, in the name of Jesus, the Lord specifically instructed me to pray for cancer this year. You devil of cancer in their bodies, come out in Jesus' name. I said, come out in the name of Jesus. Man, woman, be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone on your feet to bed, right in the hospital. Let the power of God come upon your body. Let the power of God come upon your body. Yes, I see someone. You have vibrated under the power. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the power come upon your body. I command the sickness to go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.